What's up guys? Welcome to another edition of Toothpicks. Today I got something for, you know, your nightly dinner or it can be used for a romantic dinner. What I got today, I got some T-bones that the wife picked up today. Um, these T-bones, basically, you know, T-bones, the base are basically made up of the loin, you know, in the strip. It's getting two steaks in one. Um, you want to have some good seasoning. It's really on steaks, simple seasonings go far. I don't get too you know, technical on the seasonings. So first thing you want to do, we selecting the steak, any kind of steaks, look for some good marbling. Some wife says she went up to the store and she said, baby, I look for some marbling. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, she at least it makes me feel good. She knew what she was doing, or she thought. When, so she did good, you know, you got what marbling is, you know, you got these little fat lines in here of fat. And when you have that throughout the meat, you know, you know, this might not be your best piece of steak, but you know, tripers. she did very good for going to the grocery store. And uh, you know, you got that's gonna ensure that you got a tender steak and a juicy steak when you finish cooking. First thing I like to do, which don't require much, you know, you got your little sharp knife. And you like to go out here, you know, we love fat, so I'm not gonna cut no fat out of here, but yes, you wanna get the stuff on the edges. You know, because all that's gonna do is gonna make a fire. You know, and we want somewhat of fire, but we want to burn it. So I just get the edges of the fat, you know, right, right up in there. It ain't too much on these, on the edges, so you're pretty good. Some of this I'll leave, you know. Like, I won't touch nothing else on that one. Get that back over here. This one don't have a lot, so I'll just get over here, which is by the bone. And that's about it. That's about it. So on that one, move your fat to the side, and first thing you want to do after that, you know, I got olive oil. Olive oil is just going to ensure, you know, the seasoning stays on your steak. So I got me a little brush, and you want you want to overdo it, but you want to lightly brush it, just a little bit. Don't worry about the edges. Sometimes I do it from habit, from seasoning other meat. Do your other one. Flip it over. Do it again. Do the other one. So after you got your olive oil on, what I did is basically, I got some seasonings over here I use, simple seasoning, kosher salt, or you can use sea salt. Uh, granulated black pepper so if you get anything like fine it is gonna cake up on your meat I got some parsley I basically use that in my butter mixture I'll show you in a minute and I got some granulated garlic and basically what I did is I took the salt and the pepper and the garlic put it in a little bowl right here and I like to put it in my little shaker get it all up in there get it in your shaker the reason I like to put it in my shaker because I like an even coat, you know. On our ain't on beef, you can't go too heavy. Cause when you put it on that fire, some of it's gonna burn off, you know, it's gonna fall off. So you can't go too heavy with the shaker, you know. So I like to generously put it on there, get it all on there. Make sure you mix that around because sometimes your, your salt and pepper will settle differently. She don't like the way I shake. You ain't gonna put that pepper. out there like that? Yeah, she don't like the way I shake it. <laughs> so, you know, generously put it on there. Versus 13 years of marriage. Yep. <laughs> put it on there. Other side. Get it all on there. Like I said, no such thing as too much seasoning. You know, you're not gonna oversalt these unless you just put the whole box on it. I know you got more common sense than that. So. More salt, pepper. This pepper is really the key, you know. I like to do one part salt, one part pepper when I'm doing anything. I like to get the edges on here. Get all my edges. I like to taste it all the way around. Presentation too, you know, when people pick up a piece of meat, they want to see it looking good, you know. They want to eye to eat with your eyes. That's what I always tell everybody. 
Yes, you say that all the time. All the time. Make sure I got a little more on that. And that should be about good. You know, after you let these come to room temperature, is what you'll do next, for about 15, 20 minutes, you know, never season a piece of frozen meat. And never put a piece of frozen meat on the grill. It's gonna be tasting like dust. Uh, you know, basically nothing. And last thing I'll show you right here is what I'll be using on the grill close to when I get done. This is Jason basically butter and parsley I mixed up. You know, once it starts getting done, I get my grill marks. I'll show you how to put this on. And the next thing you'll do, you know, got these all seasoned up, we'll let them rest about 15 minutes. I got my fire going out there, nice and hot. And I'll show you how we cook these. This don't take long at all. All right, continue. Hey, what's up, guys? We're back outside. We got the, uh, my cover on right now, but what I did, you know, I cleaned my grill by getting it up to 500, but it's gonna went back down to about 300. And it, you know, once I take the top off, it's gonna get real hot. Probably shoot up about four. So um, what I like to do is cook over open flame. Let's take this off. What I got right here is my coals and I got some apple wood I'm using today, some chunks. I got them real hot. The way you can tell is they're gray. Uh, you might not see that out here, but you know it's yeah. hot, red, it and gray. Fine. See the flame coming up? That's what I want because I want to put some good sear marks on this on these steaks. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do first, you know, what else do you do? Throw them on. Like to cook that one right there. You know, go ahead. And what you want to do, you know. I like medium rare. My wife don't like me eating it all the time. No, I don't. I like a little blood in mine. So I'm gonna cook these how I want them. And um, Whatever. basically, medium rare, you know, it's a little trick too. I've been doing it for a little while. You can take a temperature gauge and use it. Usually your digital thermometers will tell you what medium and what rare is. But what I do, I use my thumbs. So I got the little thumb rule. And a lot of people know this, just not me. What you do, you take your hand and yeah, index finger and be rare. The, you know the little soft point on it this would be medium rare medium and the last one because it's kind of stiff that's well done if y'all can see that you need me to do that again no i got it she's good on the picture y'all she's good on the, the camera so, whatever really. like i said rare medium rare medium and done see these are my steaks i do it and i'll just touch it but i'm not gonna do that right right here so basically to me, you know, that's about four to six minutes on each side, you know, before we flip it. And what you can do, you know, leave it there for a little bit. And I rotate these about 45 degrees to get my grill marks on here. This will really work if you got a cast iron grill crate, but I don't have one yet. But, you know, it don't mean I can't put them on there. So I'll let these cook a little bit. You do not want to be flipping these over and over and over and over again, you know, because, I mean, I mean, it'll do the job, but you might take a chance and not, you know, making an ugly steak. I like presentation. So we'll see how these come out of the day. Sometimes steak's not coming out perfect, you know, with grill marks and everything, but we're gonna make them how we want to make them today. So, you know, I got that flame going right there. Not too much fire, you know. It can be a lot more fire, it was a little bit, but got a little cool air out here today. Make sure it's not sticking. You know, we got a couple grill marks. Let's take it. Let's look. Let's see how these grill marks is turning out. A little bit. Not too much. I'll wait a little bit. But what I do after I get this one done on both sides, I'll move it off to the side and go ahead and cook my other one. If I had a wide range of more charcoal, I probably can cook both of them. So let's wait about four minutes and we'll come back and we'll flip it. Hey guys, uh, four minutes don't went by, so you know, got a little blood coming out of there. I don't want too much, you know, I like my little blood and stuff. I'm gonna flip this. Woo, that's what we want, look at that. You know, once I got that flipped, guys, I'm gonna take my butter, take about half of that, put that on there, just let it get a little bit on that side. This one. Let that melt on there while it's cooking.
spread that out a little bit. Another way to tell if your fire is good and hot, you know, if you can't, if you put your hands over there and you can't leave it there more than two seconds. It, it seems like it's hot already. It's hot. I, I see <laughs> fire going, going on. Yeah. Yeah, so this, you know, it's looking pretty good. Got the, the butter melting. And what I'll do, you know, I'll get these cooking on the other side. You know, I do my test. Oh, yeah, that needs to be moved. So, let's move this one. Let's move this bad boy off the side. Matter of fact, let's move it over here. Let's try to get our other one on. Let that one over there sit while it's cooking. I know you see me keep moving this, but you know I like to find it, make sure my flames ain't hitting it too much. Once again, I'm gonna leave this one on another four to six minutes. Then you know we'll flip it. I got a good flame going, so they're cooking pretty good. Four or five, four to six minutes and went by. Flip this bad boy. Hey, I like a little char on mine, you know, a little crispiness. Take this, put this butter, put, do the same thing you did to the other one. Put that butter on it. Spread it out a little bit, get it to melt all over that thing. I get excited when it comes to food. Yes, you do. I really do. Surprised I ain't 400 pounds. Yeah, me too. Get that butter melting over there, let it cook on the other side a little bit. So I, you know, I was waiting, you know, got me a clean pan. You don't want to put your cooked meat back in a pan that had raw meat in it. So, so I got that little seared up, touch that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put these in the pan. That looks real good. Let that come off that flame. Get that choker in there. You're going to get ready to kill your fire. Put your lid back on it. Close down your vents. Mine's at the bottom of it. Close it down. Smoke it out. And go back inside. We let these boys rest for about 15 minutes. All right. I'll catch y'all inside. Hey guys, we're back inside. As you can see, you know, we're ready. I've been letting these sit for about 15 minutes. You know, let them get more tenderized, let the muscles relax in the meat. So I got to wrap it in some foil real loosely. So I'm going to plate this up for y'all. Y'all going to be mad at me, especially one of my good friends, Rhonda. <laughs> real mad. Hey, I'm gonna, Rhonda. You can go and go throw that on daddy's plate right there. Really, Ruth? Really? Put that on daddy's plate. I'm gonna give Angel, you know, she likes meat too. And. How's I supposed to take that? Put that on there. Let's cut into one of these and see how, it's, how it looks. Uh, cut it, I'll cut yeah, it in. Yeah, yours. I'll, I'll cut me it in mine, y'all. might fall out the plate. Yes, baby. Got a little pink. That's what you wanted anyway. That's what I wanted. A little pink, you know. I say that's a medium. Uh, depending on what part, if it's by the bone, it's probably be a little more red on the edges because the thin, the meat's so thin. It's gonna, it's a little more medium, medium rare. A little pink inside. That's what I like. But I don't get us a taste. So we'll see what we're working with. Is it good, That's good. So there we go, guys. Keep on steaks. Right up your grill, quick dinner. Stay tuned for more videos. Catch y'all later.